Hi ladies, I want to welcome you tonight. I'm going to give everyone a few minutes to come on, or actually just a couple of moments. So while I'm waiting for everyone to jump on, I wanted to show you uh, my latest diffuser that I'm really uh, loving these days. It's called the Lumo Diffuser. And in here tonight I have uh, wild orange and peppermint. So you can put a couple of drops of each in. I usually do four each and uh, it kind of uplifts the mood. I'm going to talk a little bit about that tonight. Um, so I'm going to get started right away because I want to be respectful of everyone's time. So if you are jumping on a little late, you can uh, catch the recording. And I'm going to go through tonight um, some ways that you can transition to a more natural lifestyle in your home. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Amanda Mancini. I am a personal trainer. I am a health and wellness coach. I have an online company called Pure Fit Women. And I help people with fitness, nutrition, and essential oils. So uh, why the natural lifestyle? So if you're a mom uh, like me, you may be uh, starting to see a movement happening where you're seeing essential oils in the store, you're seeing uh, organic products everywhere, you're seeing uh, people trying to just be more healthy and get away from the traditional toxic chemicals that we're pretty much bombarded with on a daily basis. So I've always been passionate about health and wellness, and even years ago, my kids are uh, 15, uh, 14 now, they'll be 15 this year, I have twins, and I've always tried to do a more natural approach for them, I'm not a big medicine uh, giver, I don't like to use medications, I don't use, like to use products that have contain a lot of chemicals, so I've always done a lot of my own uh, products, and I've researched this for years and years. Uh, when I came upon essential oils, it w became a toolbox for my family. And so this is before, I mean, years ago, people, like I said, didn't know about it. So before I knew about what they could do, I would, you know, play around with different things I found in health food stores and things like that. Um, but now with the explosion of social media and the internet, we have a lot of, uh, we have a lot of products available to us. We have a lot of information available to us and people are becoming more educated. So I think in the next 10 years, you're going to see a real, a really big change in what people are doing in their homes, what kind of things they're buying, and things that we're putting into our bodies. Uh, the chemicals and the toxins that we are bombarded with on a daily basis is, is pretty uh, eye-opening if you look into it. A lot of them are related to a lot of the chemicals that are in like laundry detergents, shampoos, conditioners, uh, body lotions, toothpaste. They're loaded with uh, chemicals that cause cancer, allergies, asthma, um, headaches, uh, respiratory issues, and those are just to name a few. And they're contained in things like sunscreens and everyday products, hand soaps, uh, hand sanitizers. And when you, if you're from my generation, I'm 42 now, when we were younger, we didn't have as many chemicals in our products as we do today. And so I think our children being exposed to this from an early age, you might notice that it seems like everybody has an allergy to some something. Everybody has uh, and you know asthma or eczema or some kind of dermatitis and or headaches and people aren't putting two and two together as to what's causing these problems in the first place. It's not just uh, an accident. These things are linked and very clearly linked to these problems uh, by using these chemicals. Uh, another thing people should know is that just because a product is labeled um, organic or natural does not mean that it is. There is absolutely no regulation on this and on the product industry as far as what we put on our skin and what products we use in the home. There's no regulation on this like there is with food products. So when you see something labeled organic and you might get it on Amazon, it doesn't mean that it really is organic. There's nobody governing it to say that you can't, can or can't put that label on something. So if you buy a product and it says organic uh, sunscreen, let's just say, uh, it might contain an organic ingredient in there and then they can slap a label on there and say organic. It doesn't mean that it is. So uh, unfortunately, a lot of times even organic products are not, uh, or natural products are not as safe as people think. Uh, there's a couple of like key words you can look for that would uh, help you know if the products are safe, you know, on the bad side or not. But what I can recommend to you is there's a website called uh, ewg.org and any product you purchase, you can look up that product on that website and they have an app that's called Think Dirty. So if you're on, I, um, if you have an iPhone or whatever, you can uh, download that app and then when you're in the store, you can literally just scan the barcode and it'll give you a number range of what's acceptable. And you can at least know that whatever product you're using is safe for you and your family. 
Um, I did write down a study that I found today. So when you're using natural products, you do have to proceed with caution. So this study on uh, Dr. Mercola's website, if you follow him, he's a, a natural doctor, and he has a, a great information on his website. And he found a report that, uh, that found that at least one toxic cancer-linked chemical was found in over 40% of products that call themselves natural. So that's pretty scary. I mean, people see natural and organic, and they think that they're fine, and it's not the case. Uh, some of the things you have to be aware of, if you're looking to transition to a more natural home, um, sorry, I have a hair going on in my face, uh, toothpaste. Uh, and, I, and, you know, I always had an issue with tooth, toothpaste for my kids because on the back it would say, you know, if they swallowed it, it's harmful and you have to call poison control. And it just made no sense to me that you're going to put something in a child's mouth, especially a three or four-year-old, and expect them not to swallow it. And, and if they do, you have to call poison control. It's just scary. So... Then I switched to a natural toothpaste, but what I found out with something like this is it contains um, a, an ingredient here, so, sodium lauryl sulfate, which is actually linked to a, a certain carcinogen in the body, you know, that can spark a you know, cancer in the body. So you don't want to use this kind of product either because this is not so great either. So you really have to do your research. Uh, Tom's has a great you know, reputation and people uh, feel safe when they use the products, but it's not the case here. And then also, um, some of them do con contain fluoride, not this one, but fluoride is a neurotoxin. You don't need it in your toothpaste or in your drinking water. It's very, very bad for your children and for you. So if you're not filtering your water, you'll want to consider doing that. And I'll talk about that in a second, but you don't need fluoride to have strong and healthy teeth. It's not, um, it's not necessary. So that's one thing I want to mention. Um, Deodorants is another one. If you are using a regular deodorant or you have a teenage daughter or son that's using deodorant, they contain not only harmful ingredients but one of them being aluminum. And aluminum uh, is linked to <clears throat> certain, excuse me, certain types of, of cancers. And they even found that women that have had breast cancer, they would t uh, look at the tumors and they would find aluminum, aluminum inside of the tumors. So wearing regular deodorant is harmful for your body. Um, the, I know the negative is you might sweat more, but you're supposed to sweat. Uh, so what I do is I'll wear a natural deodorant most of the day, day, but if I'm going somewhere where I don't want to, you know, sweat through my clothes, like a party or something, I'll wear a regular one that day. But in general, uh, just so you know, you can start cutting back on that and replace your deodorant, deodorant. and I'm going to give you some, uh, you know, tips and recipes and things you can do with that. Um, sunscreen is another big one. I, I know we're so fearful of the sun today, and the reality is you don't want to burn. That is a bad for your skin. It will age your skin, but you need the sun for vitamin D, so you actually need a little bit of unprotected sun on your arms and your face and your legs for general health and wellness. So people that are low on vitamin D are more susceptible to diseases, and uh, you know there's a lot of studies to back this up. And I know people have their feelings about sunscreen and, and sun protection, so I'm not going to get into that right now. But I will say that there are certain chemicals. Again, go on the EWG.org and look up the chemicals in the sunscreen that you should not be putting on your skin or your child's skin. The best thing to do is to literally put on physical barriers like a T-shirt or a hat or sit in the shade. And that's going to be the best way for you to avoid the, the chemicals leaching into your body and to protect your body from the sun. So you also want to build up a little bit of a tolerance to the sun, so you can do that for a little while. But if you're choosing a sunscreen, I have uh, I found one called Badger, B-A-D-G-E-R, in Whole Foods, and that came up pretty clean on the EWG. And you can look for yourself. There's other, uh, there's other companies that put out a great sunscreen. But don't use them all the time. Try to make it so that you only use them when you absolutely have to. Like if you're going to be out for an extended period and there's no access to shade and you can't put a t-shirt on, uh, you know, that's really the only time I'll use it. Uh, shampoo is another one. People don't pay any mind to shampoo and conditioner, but you have to remember if you have a child or even for yourself, you're putting uh, chemicals on your head that literally are right near your brain and your pores are open and everything's absorbing what's going on there. And it's really something people don't think about, but they should start. Uh, again, if you can't eat it or you swallow it, if it's poisonous, that way it shouldn't be on your skin because you uh, you will absorb about 60% of what you put on your skin. And they actually say it's more dangerous than if you were eating a product because um, there's nothing stopping it from getting into your bloodstream, whereas your digestive system will kind of like the acid will, you know, break a lot of it down. Uh, another thing I wanted to bring out to you is laundry detergent. So... 
Uh, the first thing people do when they have a baby is they go and they buy, you know, Dreft or some other baby detergent because they think they're doing them the baby a favor. Um, it should be a red flag to you if you if not everyone in the house could use the same detergent. Uh, and, and what happens is when you sweat or perspire or you become a little heated, those chemicals that are in the detergent are leaching into your body. And that's probably one of the worst things that you could do is buy a detergent that's not uh, clean. And I, I actually make my own now, and I also use one from the company that I um, partner with, which I'll share with you after. And so if you're not into DIY, uh, there are detergents out there that are safe for the baby, safe for you and uh, kill germs and do an amazing job of cleaning your clothes and not harming anybody. So another thing I want to say, if you see something that says fragrance on it in any way, shape, or form, there are a lot of chemicals that can be hidden under the word fragrance, and it's, uh, it's extremely frightening. Uh, if you see fragrance in anything that you're buying, it's, it means that it's not a great product. Get rid of it. And uh, you can use it in your toilet bowl or something like that. But um, I always think about when I go running and I smell, um, I go past people's homes and I can smell their laundry being done. And the smell is so overpowering, it actually makes me feel sick. And uh, it just shows you how much those things can actually affect you. So they cause uh, respiratory problems, asthma, headaches, uh, allergies. So if you're suffering from any of these things or your kids are, give it kind of a thought to maybe what you're cleaning your house with what you're putting on your skin, what you're washing your clothes with, and you could start, um, I'm going to help you now about making some changes here. So, <clears throat> excuse me, so uh, a few years ago what I did was I started transition, transitioning my home to a more natural home, getting rid of all those products, and what I found that when I discovered essential oils, I realized I had a toolbox, and with that toolbox, I was able to not only use it for cleaning, but for personal care, um, and uh, you know, on my children, on myself, when, when somebody wasn't feeling well in the house, there was a remedy for it. And it could pretty much take care of about 90% of the things you need in your home. Um, and and once, as, as I went on the journey, I became more passionate about it. And that's why I'm here talking to you guys today about it. So people don't really know what essential oils are. Um, <clears throat> they are basically natural extracts from plants. So they come in a little bottle like this. And, <clears throat> excuse me. They're very powerful. They are extracted from the roots, the stems, the leaves, and the bark of, of different plants and flowers. And they have multiple unrelated uses. So what's amazing about them is that you can use them for things like, you know, a, a fever or a cold. But you can also use them for cleaning your home. And you can use it for uh, a skin issue you might be having or um, a rash of some sort like that. So you don't have... You're not going to have one product that's only going to do one thing. So with essential oils, they're doing all different things. And the next thing you know, they're in your kitchen, they're in your bathroom, they're in the baby's room, they're in your bedroom. Um, and what I tell everyone is when you're looking into transitioning to a more natural home, one thing you want to do is start slow because a lot of times people become overwhelmed between you know, changing over cleaning products and then, you know, trying to relearn a whole way of doing things. So instead of reaching for the uh, ibuprofen when you're not feeling well, Advil, you might pick up a bottle of peppermint for that headache. And it's kind of like thinking a little bit differently before you reach for those traditional things that you've always used in your life. Uh, so it really becomes natural family wellness for me and for the people I've been helping. Uh, have become It's become more of a lifestyle. And as you go, you get further into it, it's going, to, it's going to become second nature. So I'm going to go through now um, some of the, my top picks of how I would transition my home into a more natural lifestyle you know, for people that are just starting out. And, uh, and then what I would suggest to you after that, if you, are, you, know, if you like what you hear tonight, um, I can share with you how you can uh, get your oils at a discount and, and get started uh, at a level that you're comfortable with. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is having a clean home and clean air in the home. Uh, I like a clean home. It's something that's very important to me. And I think when the home is clean and things are in their place, everything just kind of functions a little bit better. Uh, I, th I feel like if your bathrooms and kitchens are not clean, every the house just feels totally out of order to me. So one thing that uh, may surprise you is that the air quality in your home is actually dirtier than the out than you know being in like a public restroom actually. And the reason why is because. People don't open their windows, uh, you're tracking things in from outside, and the house can get very, the air can get really dirty. If you have someone with a cold, and you never open the windows and air, aired it out, you know, those germs are kind of floating around, they're just not going anywhere. So one thing you could do that is amazing for purifying the air is putting on a diffuser. So if you're not familiar with a diffuser, it's basically, um, you, it's a machine you fill up with water, 
and then you put in different oils in there. And the diffuser can help purify and clean the air. It can kill bad odors, and it could also affect your mood. And there are scientific studies that prove that it actually will affect your mood. So if you suffer from anxiety, uh, stress, or you need help relaxing, or you need help focusing, if you have a child in the house or yourself uh, struggling with some form of an attention uh, deficit disorder, these things are super powerful. And in my home, when I first started diffusing, I only had it in the kitchen. And now I have them in every single room in the house. They're in my tra training studio, the bedrooms, and even the bathroom, the kitchen, and all the kids' rooms. So if you have somebody with allergies, uh, you'll diffuse the oils in their room. And that way, as they're sleeping at night and they get up in the morning, you're going to feel that your, um, your allergies will be decreased. Um, okay, so the first thing I want to go over with that is... Um, as far as diffusing, if you have someone in the home that's ill, you can diffuse oils like lemon, um, peppermint, lavender. Uh, you can also do, uh, we have an oil called, I'm going to go through this a little bit further, but we have an oil called On Guard. And this contains uh, clove and cinnamon and thyme and rosemary. And those oils help to purify and clean the air and, and help get rid of the illness and germs that are floating around the air. Okay, so a general day for me for diffusing with my family. Uh, now, like I said, I'm doing this a while now, so I wake up in the morning, and generally the first thing I'll do is put uh, peppermint and wild orange in the diffuser, four drops of each. It helps to uplift the mood, uh, wake everybody up. Peppermint is very invigorating. Uh, to, it's an amazing smell. It's actually my favorite oil. And I'll put, uh, put that on first thing in the morning. And then I put it also on in the bathroom because everyone's getting ready in the bathroom, and I like to keep the air clean in the bathroom. So... In the bathroom, I'll do lemon and peppermint, four, four drops of each every morning. Um, usually in the afternoon when the kids come home or I'm doing work at my computer, uh, you know, after the, you know, my morning is over, I'll diffuse something that will give me more mental clarity and helps with kind of focusing. So we have an oil called um, frankincense. And uh, frankincense is a spiritual oil. It's, a, it's an amazing oil. And you can use it for, like, helping to ground you if you need to, like, concentrate. So I'll put frankincense in the diffuser with some lemongrass. And lemongrass is uh, also an, uh, has a very spa-like smell to it. So if you've ever gone into a spa and you, uh, you, you like the smell in there, it's because they are diffusing oils. And you can bring that uh, feeling and that, you know, uh, aroma into your home with, with you know, doing the same thing. Uh, at night, after dinner, I always diffuse something with lavender. So it might be lavender and uh, uh, wild orange, which is for stress and relaxation. Uh, sometimes I'll do uh, something called clary sage. If you're uh, into oils, you might know some of these names. Uh, clary sage and um, lime, I like those two together. And anything to just bring down the, um, the mood and let everyone relax. Sometimes I'll do la lemon, excuse me, lemongrass and lavender. I like that as a... As a uh, um, a diffusing, you know, recipe. But for the nighttime, when you go into sleep, if you have trouble sleeping, you can put uh, those oils in a diffuser in your bedroom. So then, but by the time you get in there, now the aroma of the lavender is actually filling the room. It's to help you relax. Um, okay, so enough with the diffusing on that end. But as far as house stuff, like basic stuff that I do, I make my own cleaners. So you don't want to have anything in your cabinet that could harm a baby. So if you think about that, I remember when my kids were young, I used to lock the, um, the cabinets. They would locks everywhere because there were so many harmful products in the house that you couldn't leave anything open. And if you think about how crazy that is. Uh, so if you are using essential oils, you don't have to worry about, you know, having poisonous chemicals in the house. Um, I make my own uh, cleaners. So all you have to do is you can buy these bottles on Amazon. I also recycle uh, Pellegrino bottles, which is real simple to do, and then you just buy the, um, the tops here on Amazon. And then you can make your own cleaners, and here is one recipe I'll read to you that I use all the time. I ba basically just keep one in every like bathroom in the house, and when you're cleaning, you just grab it. It cleans countertops, bathrooms, uh, sinks, uh, toilet bowls, everything. It kills germs. It's antibacterial, antimicrobial. Uh, any, every germ you're worried about, you'll kill with this. So I'll do, um, in a 16-ounce bottle, which is what this is, a cup of vinegar, a cup of water, and then five drops of lemon, five drops of melaleuca, which is tea tree, tea tree oil. Or, if you don't have those and you want to just be real simple, we have that same blend I was telling you about. It's called On Guard, and it's a protective blend. This is probably my most used oil in the house, and it kills everything. I mean, it just... 
it kills everything. You don't have to worry. And you can use it for so many different things. Okay, another one that I like, uh, ant sprays. I know a lot of people have trouble with ants this time of year. So what I do is I take a couple of um, cotton pads and I'll put a few drops of peppermint and cedar wood. Uh, and you can use other oils, but these are the ones that I use. And I kind of just, at night, I'll wipe down the whole counter with it just a little bit. And then I leave a cotton pad in the little corners of the kitchen at night and they don't like the smell and they'll be gone. And until I discovered this, I used to uh, have all these ant traps in my house, and it was a big, like, horror show in the morning. You'd wake up, and there were just, like, ants everywhere. I have not had that problem using the oils. Uh, they just don't like it. They're not going to come near any of it. Uh, it might take a few days for you to see them disappear, and then if you see any come back, you just do it again, and, and they'll be gone. Okay, another thing that's a big deal, if you're a person that leaves an air freshener in your bathroom... Uh, that is probably one of the worst things that you could spray in the air. So if you you have Febreze in your house or uh, Glade or any of those things, throw them in the garbage. It's like one, it's like a cancer spray. That's basically what it is. It's, it's absolutely horrendous. Uh, throw it out. You don't need any of it. So what I do is you can take an 8-ounce bottle. Uh, this is like a 4-ounce to just show you. Again, on Amazon. I just order all these um, amber glass bottles on Amazon. And you can make your own things. It's great. Um, I'll do a half a cup, not in this, it'll have to be a little bigger than that, half a cup of distilled water um, and 20 drops of any combination of essential oils. So if you want to make like a room spray, my favorite one, and you can write this down, is um, I'll do a combination of 20 drops total of wild orange, eucalyptus, and spearmint, and it's amazing. Everybody loves that blend. Um, Another thing, tra uh, tracking germs into your house. So if you're walking in the house or people coming over and they, they have their shoes on and you don't want to be rude and ask them to take their shoes off, uh, you want to keep your house clean. So I, I won't ask anyone to take their shoes off in my house, but that's the first thing I usually do when I come in. But you can leave a little spray bottle by your, um, like I have like a little shoe section when you walk in, and just spray, it's 10 drops of Melaleuca, which is tea tree oil. Uh, it's a great thing. It kills everything. It actually kills MRSA and staph infections. So that's how powerful it is. But you can spray it on, put in a little spray bottle with some water, about 10 drops, and just spray the bottoms of people's shoes when they come in, well, not, you know, your shoes, I guess. And if your kids are playing sports and they're wearing, like, goggles or, you know, any sports equ equipment, you can uh, spray some Melaleuca on that as well. And that will kill any germs that are going on their, you know, their feet. Okay, um, laundry. I mentioned uh, the laundry detergent. We have a product, uh, this line that I was telling you about, uh, On Guard. I'm showing you uh, the cleanser, but this is not the detergent, but there's a whole line of products. And they make an amazing detergent. It's extremely concentrated. It's safe for babies. It has no chemicals in it at all uh, that could harm you in any way. And so I'll use their detergent, and I'll put in about four drops of Melaleuca to boost the germ killing that goes on with laundry. So that's a thing that you could do with laundry. Uh, and a baking soda is also a good booster. Um, and so is uh, lemon, lemon oil. Okay, so I'm going to move on now. I'm going to try to keep it um, as short as I can to personal care products. Uh, you know, if again, I, I want to say if you have anything with fragrance in your products, get rid of it. Uh, You'll find them. Look in your cabinet when we get off this uh, training and you'll see how many things you have in your house that have fragrance in it. That means that there are chemicals in there that the uh, government does not have to tell you what's in it. There is no testing on the products before they go to market. So just because you're putting them on your skin does not mean it's safe. There's no regulation at all. Um, so essential oils are amazing because you know what you're getting. You know that they work and they're safe. Um, one thing I want to mention with essential oils, and I'm going to go into why I use this company, same thing. Again, there's no regulation, so you could go onto Amazon, and I did it before I found this company, and you'll find an oil that says organic and natural and 100% pure, and the problem is they can fill the bottle with um, artificial you know, fragrances and ingredients, or they might put... Um, an organic coconut oil in there or whatever, and you won't know the difference, and you'll think you're using the product that you're buying, but you're really not. And if you ingest it, the, the oil, which some people do, and it's not a real oil, you can get very very sick. And the same thing, it's just going to be, um, you know, you thinking you're doing the right thing, and unfortunately not. So you have to kind of know who you're, what company you're using, and, and that will help as well. 
So body wash is a big one. So if you have a, a, a child or a baby, I have very sensitive skin. I make my own body washes because I just don't want, I just react to things. So if you have a child that is dealing with that or you deal with eczema or anything like that, you might want to uh, consider making your own. Um, Castile soap is, uh, there's a company called Dr. Bronner's. It's pretty popular. I buy the unscented one for babies. And again, whatever you use on a baby, you can use on yourself. Uh, and so in this case, for body wash, you can do um, a half a cup of unscented castile soap, uh, four tablespoons of vegetable glycerin, which you can buy in any uh, health food store or on Amazon, and that just makes it foam, like makes it creamier and thicker, three tablespoons of fractionated coconut oil. So if you don't know what that is, it's coconut oil that's in a liquid form all the time. So it's very... It's unscented. You're not going to smell any coconut. It absorbs absorbs well into the skin, and it's just uh, the preferred oil that we use with essential oils. And then you'll do 10 drops of any essential oil you like, and I usually use lavender because it's a very, um, you know, mild oil, and it can, it's basically a universal oil. You can use it with everything, uh, babies, uh, elderly people. It's, it's a, my most used oil. Uh, so that's a great one. You shake it up or you put it in a, you know, any kind of pump situation and, you, and you're good to go. You have your own body wash. And I will mention to you, if you're buying organic products from Whole Foods, I'm in Whole Foods, Whole Foods all the time, and the products are really expensive. So if you're trying to do organic and natural and chemical-free, fragrance-free, you're going to pay so much more money by buying your own products. And if you just get the ingredients, you can make it yourself. It takes five minutes. You don't have to be a chemist at all. And you're going to save everybody money, and you're going to save um, the chemicals that you'll be putting on your skin. Okay. Uh, another one if you're, uh, that I use a lot, mouthwash. I, I used to use Listerine, and I did my research on there, and of course, it's not good for us. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to go into detail on that. You can look it up. But I make my own mouthwash. So you can take any bottle you want. It could be a glass bottle like this. And basically, you're going to do... Um, I do five drops of peppermint and five drops of lemon because peppermint was gonna, is going to give you that minty, you know, cleansing feeling. And lemon essential oil is amazing for uh, cleansing your mouth and helping with anything, any germs going on in there. Uh, you can also do uh, the ten drops of the On Guard. It's going to, it's great for oral health. It has clove in it, cinnamon. So you can just do ten drops of that, and you'll put it in with. Two cups of uh, water and shake it up before you you know you put in your mouth. So every time you use it, make sure you shake it because the essential oils are going to separate from the water. So that's another thing you could get rid of is is your um, uh, your mouthwash. Uh, another thing uh, people ask me about a big one is bug spray. So the ticks today, I know a lot of people are struggling with this. They're everywhere, and I'm told that there's like a bad bad tick issue going on right now. So. Um, I make my own. Uh, we do carry the company that I partner with. We carry a product called Terra Shield, which is really great. It's, it's safe for pets and kids. So if you're not one to make your own products, you just want to buy it, you can do that. Um, but I make my own. So the one that I make, again, I buy these bottles on Amazon. It's not expensive at all. They're probably less than a dollar a bottle. And they're reusable. So you, when you get them, just because you finish it doesn't mean you throw it out. Um, you just can fill it up again. So what I do here, the one, the recipe I use is safe for babies. Like I think, uh, I have to check it, it the exact age, but it's for very, very young children. So there are certain, certain oils that are not recommended on uh, very young children. So if you're, if you're questioning that, just let me know and I'll make sure that it's safe for your child. But, um, this one I said for three and up, but I'm pretty sure it's even lower than that. So you'll do a four ounce spray bottle. This one is only two ounces actually, but you could do four or two ounces and just cut it in half. You would do two ounces of witch hazel, two ounces of distilled water, and then I do five, five drops of each. Five drops of cedarwood, lavender, spearmint, geranium, and then if you want to boost it a little more, you could do three drops of lemongrass in there. Uh, I do have this recipe, I believe, on my website. So if you want it, you can go on there and get it, or I'll be happy to uh, share that link with you. Um, okay, so I'm going to move on now. I'm going to make it a little quicker. All right, so it, so now we're at the point where you have, you can see that there's some natural ways to go with everything so far. But for <clears throat> everyday prob problems you might come across, uh, this is pretty much what I do. So for immune support, if you're having a cold or a cough or there's something going on in your body, that you need um, 
you know, to get better with. We use that arm guard I was telling you about. And um, this is that same product again. So again, you're using it for cleaning. But anything immune issue related, you can put a couple of drops of this on your feet. You can also take it internally. So I don't know if I brought it. Oh, I did. Um, we sell it in what we call beadlets. And so let's just say you're not feeling well. And normally you would go for like an Advil. And Advil is not going to take away the cold. It might just suppress a headache or whatever. Um, we have what's called beadlets. So if you can see, I don't know if you can see it in here, but no. You see these little, there you go, these are little beadlets, and it's a quarter of a drop of essential oil, and you can literally eat them, and, and it's going to help your body fight off infection. So instead of reaching for an antibiotic or, um, you know, some kind of cold remedy that you may not need right away, you can use these, and they're safe for children as well. Some people take them every day just for a healthy immune system. I will do what, um, I like to apply them on the bottom of my feet, and this is, uh, I'm going to show you what I do, but this is a travel case, and so if you want to keep things like a little more easy and at your fingertips, I put all my um, what we call roller bottles in here. So if you're not familiar with a roller bottle, so this is that on guard again in a roll, roller bottle form, and they sell them like this, and you can also make them. And what you can do is you just kind of apply it. The oil comes out. It's already diluted with coconut oil, so you don't need to worry about putting, um, you know, a barrier on it. You, you need, like, uh, if you're new to essential oils, when you apply them to your skin, we use what's called a carrier oil. It could be fractionated coconut oil. It could be almond oil. And the reason why you do this is so that you could spread it over a larger area or it's to prevent a skin sensitivity. So on a child, you'll always, always, always put coconut oil on first so that you can slow the absorption down. So it's already diluted in here. And you could just swipe the bottoms of your feet or your child's foot and it helps their immune system fight off the infection. You could also do it along the back of this, on their spine as well. So I use this every day on my kids. Um, and knock on wood, we're pretty healthy in this house. Okay. Another thing you could do if you have like a bad cold or a sinus infection and you just can't seem to get rid of it, a congestion, what you can do is steam a bowl of hot water and then you're going to put in there a couple of drops, like two drops of the On Guard, um, <clears throat> two drops of Melaleuca, and then maybe a drop or two of uh, lemon, and you put a towel over your head, and you just let that um, steam come, you know, breathe it in for about five minutes, no longer than that, and it's going to help your body clear the infection up, and it works every time. Okay, another thing that a lot of people deal with are allergies. Um, <clears throat> if you deal with allergies, and which my son does, I have as well, it seems like everybody's dealing with allergies. The best thing you can do is diffuse essential oils in your room or whatever area you're going to be in for that day. Lavender, peppermint, and lemon are great for that. We also have an amazing oil called Breathe. So if you're, um, if you, it's, it's considered a respiratory blend. And I'll put this in the diffuser a lot of times at night with lavender for my son. And it just helps you have clear airways. You can also apply it to your chest. So if you have a child that's dealing with asthma, or uh, allergies are just kind of making everything tight in there. Put a couple of drops of coconut oil on the chest first, and then two or three drops of breathe and apply it right to the chest area, and you're going to feel amazing in like two minutes, literally. It works so quick. Um, so that's a great thing to do. You can also apply the essential oils to the back of the neck. That's great for a child as well, like peppermint, lavender. It just kind of settles everything down. I'll put some lavender around my son's eyes because his eyes are very... Um, he deals with the allergies around in his eyes a lot, and it really works. He actually asks, asks me for it all the time, and it, it definitely helps him. Okay, for cuts, scrapes, and wounds, which is pretty much what we deal with in the summertime with our kids, um, lavender and melaleuca, again, you can see I'm using the same oils for a lot of things. You're going to have your go-to everyday oils, and for me, these are the ones I'm showing you. Um, melaleuca and lavender for anything related to skin issues, so to prevent infection, prevent... Um, you know, uh, you know, rashes or, or helping rashes get better quickly, a burn, you're going to put those things, those two oils on that area. And I would recommend to you, if you have a cut or a scrape, you wash the uh, area out first. So uh, the company makes a line of products called, uh, again, On Guard, and this is a hand soap. So you can wash this the area with the hand soap. Don't use um, peroxide. You don't need alcohol. Just wash it out and then put a couple of drops of melaleuca and lavender on that area and you'll see that it'll prevent the infection, it really will help. The other thing that I use a lot, especially for my kids, is called uh, a product called Correct X. 
Uh, this is also a barrier to like um, if you sweat and you get a rash or like a chafing, you can put that on you before you before you do your uh, activity or whatever it is. But if you have a cut or a scrape or whatever, a burn, you you can also use this as well. And I use this a lot. Um, I actually burned my arm. I don't know if you can see it right there. And uh, you had to see what it looked like two days ago. So it's healing real quick. And uh, this is a go-to. People also use it for as a lip plumper. And it fine lines around the eyes. And uh, dark circles around the eyes as well. It's great for all of those things. So it's got multiple uses as well. Okay, um, digestive issues. If you have a child with a, st a stomach ache. And I've experienced this with my kids and myself. If you have any kind of bloating issue or your just, stomach is just not right, whatever the reason may be. We have an oil. It comes in a regular oil, but this is a touch blend. It's called Digest Zen. And it contains like fennel, coriander, all the oils that ginger, oils that will help. I don't remember all of them offhand, but all the oils that will help settle your stomach. So literally within 10 minutes of rolling this on your stomach area where you're feeling discomfort, you're going to feel relief. Um, for a child, it's a no, it's something that I would use all the time. Kids are always complaining that their stomach is hurting them. First, you have to figure out if there's something bothering them, if it's a food or something. But sometimes if they're not, if it's just a regular stomach ache or whatever, or if you've eaten too much or uh, you're gassy from something you ate, this is amazing. It's uh, You can drink it as well if you buy it in the bottle form. You can put a drop in your water, and it also comes in a capsule form. <clears throat> okay, I'm almost done. Uh, relaxation, sleep, and stress. People just seem to have trouble with this all the time. Lavender uh, is a great one to use. And what you can do is make a little spray bottle, keep it by your bed, and spray you know, lavender on your pillow with some water. It doesn't have to be um, a major production. But just leave it next to the bed. Um, roll some lavender on your feet at night. And, it, and that's why I love this um, little case that I have because I could just pull out what I need. So if you're a mom and you like... I, I am always pulling this out. I, it's it's amazing how, how often I use it in the day. But, you know, lavender, you're just going to apply the back of their neck along their spine or on the bottoms of the feet if they don't really like the smell of the oils. Or if you have a baby and you don't want the baby to, um, you know, obviously put their fingers in their mouth or anything like that, you can do the bottoms of the feet and usually safe in that area or they're on their back. Um, so lavender is great for that. And you'll, you'll diffuse your oils at night. You know, Serenity is another oil that we carry that's great for relaxation. Uh, wild orange is good for anxiety. Sandalwood is great. If you're familiar with sandalwood, uh, frankincense, you can apply those on your body and you can put them in the diffuser at night before you go to bed about 30 minutes before. Um, for focus, energy, concentration, people that struggle with focusing on work, schoolwork, test taking, if you have a child that has ADD, ADHD, autism, uh, that's something that probably you've dealt with your whole life or their whole life with them. Uh, what we do is we use, um, again, I'm saying the same oils over and over, wild orange and peppermint in the diffuser. You can also apply it to their body, back of the neck, behind the ears, on the temples, and that's going to help them relax, um, focus, concentrate, and help with energy levels. Um, if you do have a child or somebody that struggles with in, um, attention, we have an oil, which I don't have in front of me right now, but it's called Intune, I-N-T-U-N-E, and that oil is, a, is um, really amazing for helping a child like, kind of just focus themselves on their schoolwork and you know, kind of control the behavior that's going on. So that's a great one. Um, for head and neck tension, uh, pain and inflammation, um, you're going to use oils like peppermint. You can, so in the morning, if you feel like, I always have a stiff neck. I don't know how many people are dealing with this, but it seems to be pretty common. So I'll do a couple drops of peppermint and lavender, and I'll just apply it right to the back of the neck. Um, it really does relieve the tension there. You can add some frankincense to that as well. Uh, if you're a person that's dealing with any kind of head or neck tension, anywhere where you're feeling stress and, and pain and tenderness. Um, also, we carry an oil called Deep Blue, if you're familiar with uh, doTERRA, but um, it's a pain and inflammation blend. And, and again, I love this these roller bottles because you just apply it to the area that bothers you. If you have a tight back in the morning or a hip or a knee, just roll it on that area, and within uh, five minutes you're going to feel relief, and then you'll be able to go about your day. Okay, so I'm going to close it up here. What I wanted to bring out to everybody, I'm going to post uh, 
some of these recipes I mentioned today, and I have some other ones I didn't mention, like an after sun spray uh, to help heal the skin, uh, body lotions, things like that. And you can visit my website at purefitwomen.fit, and I have recipes on there, I have DIY, I have articles on essential oils if you're interested in what they do. Um, but just know that whatever you are using on your uh, uh, on your skin, you know your body is absorbing it. So the reason why I partnered with this company, which is called DoTerra, if you look at the label, is because number one, it's the largest essential oil company in the world, and uh, they have the most tested and purest oils that you'll find on the market today. Nobody comes close. Uh, they have an unbelievable uh, sourcing model and. Um, testing model and it just uh, feel very comfortable using the oils on myself and my children. So if that's something that you're interested in, um, we do have the, um, you have the ability to get a wholesale account. So it's much like going to Costco. Um, you can become a wholesale customer and you can save 25% off your oil. So whoever invited you to watch this um, Facebook Live, you know, reach back to that person and they can help you on, uh, and show you how to get that wholesale account. But you definitely don't want to pay full price and don't, um, you don't want to go to Amazon either because those people that are on there with doTERRA are not legal distributors of our products, which means that a lot of times they tamper with the bottle and you might not, you'll, you'll never know it because they have tools that can make it so that it looks like it's brand new and they are tampered with a lot of times and you just to me that doesn't make sense you can get your own wholesale account you can get the best price possible and uh, doTERRA stands by all their products if there's something you're not happy with uh, you can return it uh, for a full refund and um, and that's it so if you're interested in, in the oils you want to get started you're not sure where to start or, or you know how to go about it just send me a message and I will give you some information on how to go on to um, to my website and you can get to doTERRA and you can order whatever you, you know you feel comfortable with uh, so I appreciate your time and I hope this was helpful to you and feel free to post questions if you think of them after I will see them on this uh, Facebook live video and I can respond uh, at that point and help you get uh, to a more natural lifestyle so I hope you guys have a good night and thank you for your time